Hi again. Now this slide talks about an operon. What is an operon? It is um, a system. You know, you have different genes that are controlled by a single regulatory system. Now it's, it's like the switches in the classroom. You have one switch, but it opens, it, switch, it switches on uh, a few lights at a time. Why do you do that? You know, otherwise for every you know, light, you'll have an individual switch. So it's a waste, waste of, of, of energy and resources. So, but because when you want to switch it on, you know you want to switch everything on at the same time or switch off all at the same time. So you, you may as well just have one or um, several groups by using one switch. So that's the same here in an operon means you have many, many, more than one at least. Transcription units, transcription unit refers to genes. You have met more than one transcription unit that are regulated by one system. So in this case, you see here structural gene one, structural gene two. What is structural gene? Structural gene are genes that can be transcribed and translated to have a protein product. It's a general name. It's, it's called a structure. It's not something necessary to be to, to be genes that are evolved in structure. No, it's just a gene that uh, can be transcribed and translated to get a protein product. So you have three structural genes here that are controlled by one promoter and one operator. And all of this is called an operon. And this was first described or introduced by Jacob and Monat in 1961. Now also note that uh, this, while well, this is the operon, you have another set of genes which are the regulator genes. You can see this in the previous slide as well. So this is the gene, functional gene, and you have the regulator gene. This is the functional gene, you have the regulator gene. Similar with, similar with the individual system, you get the functional gene, you get the regulator. So, so this is called the operon, including the regulator gene as well. All right. Um, so it just is just referring to the fact that um, there's, there's one switch, promoter and operon, that controls three different um, genes. Most of the time, all these genes will be related. So that's why when you switch one on, you, you, you might as well switch the others as well because they are going to be needed in a particular pathway. Now, this is an operon. Induction, again, induction means switching on. This is um, uh, a, a repressible system. Uh, sorry, an indu inducible system. That means normally it's off. Okay, so... Polymerase, transcription is blocked, it cannot move, but if you add inducers, inducer will bind to the uh, repressor molecules and prevent the repressor molecule from binding. Here you can see, normally in this shape, this is just examples, yeah, just um, uh, illustrations of, of how it could be. So in this shape, it likes to bind to DNA, but after binding to the, D the, in the inducer, it changes shape and the change of uh, its shape uh, makes it, renders it uh, having a different um, activity. That means it likes to bind to itself, it doesn't like to bind to DNA anymore. So leaving that area free for polymerase to bind and polymerase can then uh, transcribe the operon. Bear in mind that when it transcribes the operon, it actually transcribes all three genes together in one mRNA. So you have one, that's why it's called uh, polycystronic, multiple transcription unit in transcription in, in, unit is a gene, multiple transcription unit in one transcription process. And as it goes along, then you have your ribosomes uh, trans, translating. So of course, when it, the ribosome reads the mRNA, you have the start and stop site. You have the polypeptide 1, polypeptide 2, and polypeptide 3. Okay? If I ask you a question, this system, is it the prokaryotic system or the eukaryotic system? Can you answer that question? Now, what the telltale sign that you can see from here is that translation, right? is occurring simultaneously with transcription. As soon as transcription begins and you have an mRNA, translation can already start. Now, this is not possible in eukaryotes. Why? 
Again, you have to look at transcription and translation in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, you have the nucleus. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. You have the mRNA, and the mRNA needs to be transported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where it gets translated. Correct? So, where does this happen? This only occurs in prokaryotes, in bacteria, where you don't have a clear membrane, you don't have a nuclear nucleus, it has something, a structure called the nucleoid, but as soon as transcription starts, when you have the mRNA, translation can already occur. This is also called coupling, coupling of transcription and translation. And only, again, it only, uh, it only uh, happens, it only takes place in prokaryotes. It doesn't take place in eukaryotes, okay? Right? You have to understand that. So looking at this, you know that this is a prokaryotic transcription and translation because transcription and translation processes are coupled. Uh, an example of operon in repression, that means again, repression means it is normally on, but if you don't want it, you just switch it off. So normally it's on, polymerase, transcribe, mRNA, and coupling of transcription and translation, that means you, you have all this product being produced. When you add the repressor, the repressor binds to the uh, repressor molecule, right? This is a co-repressor, and then once the co-repressor binds to the repressor, it uh, changes the shape. Now, in this case, it's the opposite of what happens earlier. Changes of this shape through binding increases the repressor's affinity to bind to the DNA, and then that uh, kicks off, kicks out the polymerase. Yeah. Again, you know, these are not you're not talking about the same molecule, although they are both colored green. These are just examples. So um, we'll see later in the lack of operon, you have uh, different repressive molecules that have a particular affinity to certain molecules and so on. So in this case, it's repression. Repression means it needs to be switched off. Okay? Okay, before we... So, so uh, you, you need to familiarize with that from the previous video where we talk about um, imbustible system, repressible system. Here we talk about operons. And, you know, go, go through those videos and uh, go through some some I've also got some other 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 videos that I've given you um, and then before we go further and look at the lack of system and I'll see you in the next video